Hello, welcome to Fowware Studios and Cribbage Craze. I just wanted to take a little time in this video and walk through some of the basic features that exist in Cribbage Craze and highlight a couple of things that uh, hopefully you'll find of interest. So just getting into it, you'll see when the app comes up for the first time that basically there are five buttons which exist here on the main screen. The left side are all buttons to launch or continue a game that's in progress, and the right side are informational or customizable options that you've got available to you. So I'll start out with options just to show you a couple of things that you can look at at your convenience. If you click the options button and you see here that you have the ability to fill in your name, that's just a simply a function of the fact that um, you're not currently logged into Game Center for, the, uh, for this game itself. And so you have the ability to put whatever name you like there. Uh, but just a forewarning, your Game Center name will override this name if you ever choose to play a multiplayer game online, which of course we um, encourage you to do. It's a, it's a great uh, feature of the game. So you can choose any sort of silver button that you see like this. It's just a way to choose options. And uh, you can feel free to click and it will rotate through your options and you can decide for yourself what you like. We have a couple of different card backs to choose from, colors, table, and also here in the options is a link to the website as well as in-app purchases. This is where you can unlock a couple of extra things within the game and, and hopefully add a little functionality if you feel that that's interesting to you. So uh, coming back to the main screen itself, maybe I'll walk really quickly through what it takes to launch a game and come back to a couple of the other features as a process of doing that. In the new game, as mentioned, you can change and customize different, uh, different options here. So maybe I'll change the difficulty to easy rather than normal, and I'll leave the rest the same and kick into play. Now I'm not going to walk through gameplay itself, that's a separate video, and feel free to play that one back. Um, within the main screen itself, you've got several, um, several not completely um, hidden, but um, just tucked away features that you might take a look for. So one, of course, is the hint, which will tell you if you're playing against the computer, it'll give you a thought about what you might choose for a discard. You've also always got the ability to change in-game options. So some people don't like their cards sorted because it's not uh, reflective of how you'd play in real life. If you don't like the style of clicking a card and confirming it, you can single click cards by choosing this. And finally, if you want to count your own cards, there's an option to manually count your cards. You also have the ability to concede a game here or to pause a game. So once I've chosen the features that I like, you just click OK and you're right back into the game. Um, without getting into too much gameplay, maybe what I'll do is I'll play a, uh, I'll, I'll discard a couple of cards and just kind of keep with the gameplay. Let's see what the hint was. So that's suggesting I throw the seven of the jack, so I can do that. And for the cut card, sure enough, we get a jack, so that wasn't a great discard. Now there are two ways to uh, even within that uh, sort of play cards. You can either click and confirm, or you can drag. So feel free to use whichever um, suits you best. The other thing that's kind of interesting here is within the game, the statistics will always be building up and always be tracked here on the back side of the board for your convenience. Now this can be kind of interesting to, to drill down into as you play along and sort of see how things are going, what the breakdown of your points has been, and, and um, just get information there in game. But let's go ahead and pause the game. And that kind of segues into the next feature of the game, which is that any game that you start, there's an unlimited number of games that you can resume that at a point in the future. So you can see here that because we got a cut card of a jack, um, Easy AI, whose name is Lefty, ended up getting two points, so we're actually losing this game right now. But if I click this to resume the game, I jump right back in where we left off. And I can play my next card and continue on with the game and pause again if I'd like. So that's, that's a very nice, very powerful feature um, and feel free to use that at your convenience. 
as you're playing along with the game, the other thing that's really interesting about Cribbage Craze is the way that the history builds up. And so if you click the history button, you'll see that it keeps track of every game that's ever been played. Now this is a new installation of Cribbage Craze, so there's only been one game that I've played to completion for which I have statistics. And you can see that there really are a substantive number of statistics, including what uh, more advanced players might find interesting in terms of what your averages are. And finally, there's always uh, an option to take a look at what your best hand was, best pegging, best cut card that you got, cut help that is, and so on and so forth. And if you want to go and look at a game, including the one that's in progress right now, you can click that row and it will bring up a quick little screen that shows you what the breakdown is and how your points. Now, of course, this game's in progress, so there are really no points to show. But what is interesting is you can see that to date, these are the cards I, I was dealt. Um, these are what I discarded. And so far, these are the cards that Lefty has played. And if you want to see, this is our play-by-play -play that we've played, that we've got to date. So every single game, including ones that have already completed, you can see a breakdown of how all the information, um, sorry, all, all the cards and all, all the detail behind how your play went so that you can get to any level of detail within your game that you may have an interest in. And if you don't have an interest, it's just there in the background and it's a nice way of summarizing inform, uh, details. The other really interesting part of Cribbage Craze is that you can filter this information. And while it's somewhat interesting for playing against the computer, uh, I've found that it's extremely interesting when you're playing against your friends and you want to see what your lifetime sort of stats are against someone and also see are they luckier than you are do they have better plant pegging totals? Like how do they how do they do versus you lifetime? So filtering is quite interesting, uh, quite a powerful feature as well. So closing this down, that kind of leaves just one button left to look at, and that is the multiplayer. Uh, I saved that for last because there are a couple of different nuances to it, and one is that if you're playing local or you're playing on uh, so that's Bluetooth or you're playing local Wi-Fi, feel free to talk it out with whoever you're talking, uh, whoever you're playing against, whether you want to be a host or whether you want them to host the game. And if you host, you can choose all the options and then start searching and the other person can also search for you and join and join a game in that manner. Um, when it comes, however, to playing over the internet, uh, we, we offer two, I think, really interesting ways to play. One is versus a random person, and that person would be looking for exactly the same criteria that you're looking for, or versus one of your friends. And how do we determine who your friend is? Through Apple's standard Game Center functionality. So when you click on one of these buttons, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to say, okay, are you logged into Game Center? So I click the button and it will go take a look and it'll find out sure enough I'm logged into Game Center and so my name comes up and it logs me in automatically and now I'm good to go and I'm able to play a game against a random player Oops, sorry and from there you can choose what game criteria you want and you can click search now one point here is that you're only allowed cut for deal in internet games just because it's um, the only really truly fair way to um, to set that up but if you choose and one other caveat is if you choose something that's a little more exotic if you choose a game low cribbage best of five or you know something that may not be as common just be aware that it might take a while to match that game for you but then as you click search, it will start searching for players. It will give you feedback. And once someone connects, you'll be able to click the play, excuse me, the play button and continue. Same thing's true for if I wanted to play versus one of my friends. So I can, I can choose the game type that I like. I can search. And this will pop up my standard uh, game center um, display. And I can invite the friends who I, uh, who I would like to play. And that can be really fun for, as I said, building up lifetime stats and, and information um, about how well you do against your friends. So in a nutshell, that's the basic functionality of Cribbage Craze. Again, I think that we've tried very hard to pack a lot of functionality into a streamlined uh, package. I hope you find that's the case, and I hope you enjoy the game. Thanks.